So what do we think of when the word cult comes to mind? Brainwashed followers, mindless zombies, uh, charismatic con artists who are out to take your money. I mean, we don't usually think of the Baptist church down the street or our Catholic grandmothers. The word cult itself carries negative connotations. It's just not neutral. And for this reason, scholars of religions, or new religions, have tried to come up with a number of alternatives to the word cult. Alternative religions, unconventional religions, new religious movements, or NRMs, new religions. There's no single term that's quite adequate, however. Alternative to what? Unconventional by whose standards? New in what sense? For example, many new religions in California um, are old in their home environments. We have only to think about uh, Hare Krishna, or more formally, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, which was new to the United States in the 1960s when Swami, Swami Prabhupada brought it here. But in India, in its home setting, it's centuries old. Their Krishna uh, devotion and Krishna consciousness has been part of that culture for um, eons. Well, that might be a slight exaggeration. So it's important to get the terminology right when we're uh, looking at religion in California because of its diversity. It's really neither accurate nor appropriate to call a religion that we don't understand or don't know much about a cult. So I'd like to use this time to um, introduce a few terms that were developed by uh, Eileen Barker, who's a, sociology, a sociologist of religion at the London School of Economics. She's retired now, but she studied new religious movements for more than three decades. And she's come up with a couple of helpful ways to discuss what I'm going to call new religious movements or new religions. She begins by introducing the difference between primary and secondary constructions of reality. A primary construction of reality would be reality as it is. Now, when we look at religions, we would say, well, what does the religion say about itself? What do Muslims say about Islam? What do rabbis say about Judaism? The scholarly way of saying that might be to, to call it the emic perspective. What is the perspective of insiders? What are they saying about themselves? A secondary construction of reality is what other people are saying about the group or the event or the issue. What do reporters say about Scientology? What do scholars say about Christian science? And I've given you two new religions with science in the uh, title, but they're very different. Um, so the academic way of describing these secondary constructions of reality is the etic view, right? That's, how, that's what outsiders are saying about these groups. A personal example might be to consider myself, right? I have my own worldview, my own understanding of who I am, what my identity is. That's very different from the secondary constructions of reality about me that might say, oh yeah, she's a teacher, she's a wife, she does Zumba. Um, all sorts of different constructions that may or may not be the way I see myself. So when we think about new religions, it gets even more complicated because there are many actors involved in making judgments about them.